Hello, and welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. My name is Martha, and I'm excited to be tangling with you today. We are already on number nine, if you can believe that. And this one is a little bit different. We're working on uh, multiple tiles in layers, and then eventually working towards our own personal ensemble piece. So this has been exciting to watch unfold. So here is my tile that I'm going to be working on with you guys today. And for my organic tangle, I went, I went to one of my old favorites, which is Vertigo. I always have been drawn to this tangle for whatever the reason. So one of our um, messages, if you will, for this project uh, that we're working on together is to go back to our roots and one of the, or the very first um, step in the Zentangle method is gratitude. And we thought we would just take a moment um, each time we sit with our new tile and think about something that we um, are grateful for, something that we has gotten us through these past few weeks, these kind of crazy um, times that we're living in right now. And for me, uh, one thing that I can say that I'm grateful for is uh, every day I've really made a point of getting outside for an hour if I can handle it and going for a walk just all by myself or, or with my, my puppy. And these walks have been very valuable to me in getting through these sort of um, strange new every days that we've been we've been um, experiencing. So with a pencil and just with uh, a quiet thought, uh, we're asking that you just in this larger space here, write something that you are grateful for, something that you have gratitude for. So I am going to say that I'm thankful for walks. Kind of in contrast to these organic tangles that we've all chosen to do along this border, I'm going to work with something that's a little bit more graphic um, in this space over here. So with the darker green uh, micron that we have, I am going to map out a grid. And I'm going to do it in a pretty standard way, but if you wanted to add some some curve or some angle to yours, um, that's completely up to you. So I'm going to do a tangle called Zonked, and I've done this tangle for a while. It's been around for a while, and it was uh, designed by a woman named Barbara Finwall, and I don't know Barbara, but thank you, Barbara. I've enjoyed this tangle, and I thought it would be a nice compliment on this tile. So I'm going to draw out a grid with the darker green pen and we all have different uh, borders that we're dealing with, but a straight line is something that I think all of us can fit into to what we have on our tile. So I'm going to pick, pick an angle that makes sense to me and then draw parallel lines to that. And your angle might come straight off if you prefer. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw them like this. So you can watch me if you like. And I'm try to have a light hand on this line. And I'm going right to the edge. And then I'm going to draw a parallel line. I would say it's about a half inch away. And then continue with a fairly evenly spaced grid lines. Sometimes they line up perfectly with, with a line that was already there. And then I'm going to turn my tile and work in the other direction. And then from here, I'll draw the perpendicular lines. I 
again, we'll all have to be creative in our own way in how these lines fit behind your organic tangle. And finishing my grid on this side. So from here, I'm gonna focus in and work on one square and then you'll all get the hang of it. And we can kind of go from there. So within this one square, I am going to draw an X corner to corner. And then focusing in on this center where the lines cross, I'm going to make a diamond. And then fill it in. Once I get it filled in, I like to sort of add a little, sort of some rounding here, giving the diamond a little more life. So I'm gonna put down my dark green pen now and pick up my light green pen. And in each segment that's left, I'm going to draw ORID lines and I'll do three ORID lines in each space. Turning my tile as I go. And then I'm going to go back and add a little weighting to these lines with a delicate touch just on the tops of these arcs. You don't really need much ink, but the overall effect is really cool. Very simple. Turning my tile each time. And so that's it, basically. Whether you like to work one square at a time or do several squares, um, that's completely up to you. I am, I think I'm gonna stick with the one pen at a time uh, philosophy here. Working corner to corner. And then filling in diamond each time. I do like adding more metered out tangles with more organic tangles. It's a great balance in the tile, but also adding that filled in diamond, which adds, you know, drama to all these lines. always working with complementary strokes. And that, that rounding touch, it's really, it's just subtle, but every time you are able to go back and revisit a line, you can just 
add a little love, add a little purpose. Each of you will have your own little personality that will come through even in something as basic as squares and diamonds. Again, we'll all have to be creative as we work to put our tangle underneath the organic border that we've already drawn. Doing the best we can, there won't be any wrong way. Already you can see that this looks pretty cool as is. It's almost sort of a variation on floors. As you fill in more and more of these squares, you start to see that a meta pattern forming. It's also very cool. Working on um, this beautiful Zendala, we're giving ourselves permission to work right to the edge, which isn't what we always do, but it's kind of it's kind of neat to challenge yourself, figure out how things might fall off the edge. These beautiful green pens are so welcome at this time of year where, where we are at springtime and couldn't come soon enough, I'll tell you. Tucking the last few ones underneath my leaves here. I really do love this rich green ink. So at this point, I usually like to look at uh, what I've done so far, and if there are any lines I want to sculpt, smooth out, if you will, after the initial ink has dried. I do love that permission to go back anytime you want and revisit a line. So there, I'm going to put down my dark green pen and pick up my light green pen. Just taking each of these sections and drawing. I'm choosing three that fits perfectly in my size square. You might need four lines or maybe only two, but whichever it is you do choose, you're going to want to use the same number of auras in each section. And you'll see in a minute how they do line up quite nicely with each other once you start filling in your squares as they start lining up together. And yet another meta pattern starts to appear, which is very cool. This fragment can be done with more angular lines as well. Gives another different effect. Yours perhaps are more naturally angular. I'm a huge fan of moving my tile each time I do a new stroke. Sometimes I even change the way I rotate the tile, figuring that there might be an even better, more comfortable way for me to add my lines. Sometimes all you need is to let your pen rest just a little bit longer on that paper and you will get that desired darker ink, that waiting. I'm hardly touching the paper there, I'm just 
very gently going over the top of the line. Sometimes my auras are not as evenly spaced as I may have intended, but you can use that weighting technique to fill in the gaps, if you will. And slowly this grid full of lines starts to look like a beautiful tiled floor. Remembering as you focus on these fine lines that breathing nice deep breath every once in a while. And remembering it's only pen and paper. I still remember when I first drew my first crescent moon. Simple, simple tangle. And my mom told me to aura the shape that I had just drawn, a little familiar ladybug shape. And of course, I didn't really know what she meant at the time. And then she explained it, and I thought, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I can do that. But what wasn't obvious to me watching, because sometimes when you watch somebody else do something so effortless, it's the simplicity of it that you get lost in and you think, oh, that's so easy, I can do that. But it wasn't that it was so simple. It was just that she was so relaxed and so comfortable doing it. I hadn't noticed that her aura lines were all equally spaced. So it wasn't just you know, mirroring the line that she had just drawn. It was that each one had a very similar space. And that was what gave it that elegant, simple beauty. It took me a while to figure that out, and I kind of came upon it myself, which I was glad to have noticed it on my own. But it is, it is something that really can change the way your art looks. That deliberate space. I'm loving how that's looking. The two greens playing off one another. Even with this one, this has this sort of classic Zentangle aha where you get a surprise once you start pulling it all together this beautiful lighter green floral pattern that's coming out is so pretty. I feel like I want a scarf or something made out of this. We're working with these two complementary colors here. And it would be fun to do this whole project with two different colors even and see where that takes you. Two different shades of blue or pink or Purple and yellow, who knows? What are your favorite what are your favorite colors to work with? I think the green's making me happy right now. You can see this process is pretty forgiving. I don't have perfect lines or perfect weighting on each one, but the overall pattern is still beautiful. Quite beautiful. Remembering to breathe and let go of that tight grip on your pen. There's kind of a lot of detail work and it's very natural for your hand to tense up. It is for me at least. But each fragment I feel I find it's a little more comfortable, a little more relaxed, a little more confident. I enjoy the, uh, the focus it takes every time you look at another square.
not not taking for granted the simple stroke. And then just figuring out how it works out underneath here, underneath all these petals. These project packs are fun to do with a friend. You can put the video on simultaneously, maybe pull up a FaceTime phone call and tangle together in tandem at the same time, but the distance doesn't matter. Okay, that is looking very cool, I think. So now I'm going to do a little bit of shading. And I'm going to just focus on shading this new section that we just tangled together. Putting away my pen and picking up my graphite pencil. And the first step I would like to do is I would like for this whole area that we just tangled to sort of look like it's sitting underneath my vertigo and the best way I know to do that is to shade behind the vertigo which for me all right this is going to be a little tricky and maybe you have a different tangle but whichever tangle you have I'm going to fill in the background space with graphite very carefully. I'm going to take advantage of that lovely sharpened tip and put graphite in every space that I can figure that's behind my vertigo. Again, carefully getting it in there. And what that's doing, of course, also is really making all those uh, needles come to the surface in their whiteness, if you will. I think you can see that I'm, I'm using not the very tip of my pencil. I'm using an edge of it, so I'm getting a softer application of graphite. And that will allow me to smooth it into the paper with my tortillon when I'm ready. All right, so with my tortillon, and again, with that same, same angle, I'm going to soften that graphite in those spaces behind. Even if you've missed a space, often there's enough graphite on your tortillon to spread a little graphite love where it's needed. And now I'm going to pick up my graphite again. And going along with that same idea, I'm going to add some graphite around the initial edge of where these needles meet my tiles here, my little mosaic of flowers. If you're feeling a little nervous about covering your beautiful work with graphite, you can go with a light touch with the graphite. And then, of course, you can always go back and add a little bit more. And so with the tortillon, I will more gently now, because I'm working over inked in spaces, gently smooth and shadow. Again, giving this the illusion of it being behind these pretty petals of my vertigo. And then if you like, I'm going to just add sort of a, a ribbon of graphite following along 
the dark green squares and it creates sort of a striping effect. Kind of love that. And I'm gonna gently smooth that, I'm sort of going in between the spaces. I'm not really smudging the where the dark green diamond shapes are because I don't wanna mess with my paper too much there. And then if you think, well, you could leave it like that, or I'm actually gonna do it in the other direction as well. Turning my tile and again, a ribbon of graphite along those diamond shapes. And then gently And I think if you want, with your white, this charcoal white pencil that we have, you could just add a little brightness to these areas left behind. It's not entirely necessary, but you can see how it just enhances the whiteness, drawing attention to these spaces left without graphite. I'm not pushing too hard. You can kind of play around with the weight of it on your own tile. Very pretty. Again, I have it in my hand, I may I may just add a little white to some of these top needles. It's not necessary, but brightens them up a little bit. Especially where they come into the pattern there. And then finally we have this little, our little seed pods down here that we did a long time ago. And I might just add a little bit of graphite down each edge. I would just recommend that however you want to shade your seed pods that you do it in a consistent way throughout all six of your tiles. And then with that wonderful bright white. There. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you enjoyed this day five of our Project Pack series number nine. And I am so looking forward to seeing what everybody does with all of their tiles and we would love to see them and hope you have a wonderful day and that we see you very soon.